When Elijah is saying, I hear the sound of the abundance of rain, Elijah is, Elijah is talking about a supernatural economy. He's talking about an invisible economy, an invisible account. Because the earth is in famine right now, according to Elijah's day. When he said, I hear the sound of the abundance of rain, he's talking about from heaven. Now, if we look at Malachi, I want you to see something here in Malachi. Look what the Lord began to promise people that started to operate in his kingdom of heaven system. They started to sow and honor God. Look what he said he would do. I want you to look at this. Look what he say in uh, Malachi chapter 3 verse 10. It says, bring, you all, bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. I want you to really think about this, meditate, ponder on this. The Lord just said that he would open up the windows of heaven. Now, I want you to really, really um, grasp this, that the major point that I want you to see here is these windows are not of earth. These windows are of where? Of heaven. My goodness. So your harvest, always remember this, if you're taking those, always remember this, that your harvest is of heaven. It materializes on earth, but it's of heaven. So look at the origin of where your harvest is beginning. Your harvest is the foundation, the creation of it is beginning in heaven. Now, look at this. If it's beginning in heaven, there is no demonic power there to shorten it, steal from it, decrease it, minimize it. Because it's of heaven. My goodness. So imagine what the Lord has coming toward you is of heaven. It's not of earth. It's not of hell. It's of heaven. And even the starting point of your harvest is genuinely broad and vast and large, and wide, and satisfying, and heavenly. Your harvest is of heaven. Look, the windows, it, he didn't say, I will open up windows of earth. He said, I'll open up the windows of heaven. So understand, the windows of heaven is a dimension in the heavens in heaven where God has different avenues to reward the sower. <laughs> Man, there's something else. In, in, he in, in, in heaven, windows are different segments of abundance. What it is, what I said, is different segments of abundance. Is different sections of wealth. What I said is different sections of wealth. Is different departments of prosperity. What did I say? Is different departments of prosperity. So you, you got to understand this. The, 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 the realm that Solomon was sowing out of, he started operating from these windows. When God said, I shall make you rich, what well, God is saying, you unlock, a, you unlock windows with this sowing. I shall give you riches, rather, because, see, he was already rich. You notice God didn't have to tell Solomon, 
I, I, I'm going to make you rich. He said, I will give you riches because he was already rich. So God's saying, even though you already have abundance, you just stepped into more abundance. Wow. Wow. What I said, even though you have abundance, you just unlock more abundance because you handled the abundance that you had correctly. That's why when you get a financial miracle at your workplace, don't steal the money. When God, right now, let me just give you an example. Say you get $75,000 out of nowhere. Don't go take the money and start trying to handle stuff in your life. Sow the money because something is coming in the future that you can't see. And God gave you that level of seed ministry to deal with it. You, you can't tell me nothing. I'm a master sower. I recognize times in my life when I had a lot of money, the lot of money was there so that I could use that level of seed sowing for the level of warfare that was coming to me. You're not hearing me. Glory to God. I done got drunk. Filled with the Holy Spirit. Filled with the Spirit of God. Filled with his mighty mindset. See, okay, right now, say you get $112,000. You got to be prophetic and recognize this is the level of seed that God is ministering to me to sow at. Because something big has been planned against me by the gates of hell and planned for me by the gates of heaven. Oh, my goodness. I said something bad has been planned for, 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 for me. Something has been planned bad against me by the gates of hell. But something has been planned good for me by the gates of God, by the gates of heaven. Many people don't think about this. So you get that large money and you start taking from it. And then, when, let, let, me, let me just show you this. No, because I, I, I've told you my story. I've been transparent in some degrees about, I didn't tell you about all the financial uh, miracles and provisional miracles happened to me in my younger years and my latter years. I, I haven't told you about all those things. I haven't uh, reveal all those things, but what I have revealed to you, I have given you a blueprint of how to recognize prophetically that God is wanting to upgrade my sowing so he makes this happen. And what happens when you eat the seed? When the attack come up against you, you unarm. But what happens when you sow the seed? When the attack come up against you, you're unharmed. You're unarmed if you eat the seed. You're unharmed if you sow the seed. Wow. What I said? Unarmed if you eat the seed. Unharmed if you sow the seed. Unarmed if you eat the seed. Unharmed if you sow the seed. Because if you sow the seed, you pit in the prevention. You, you invest your soul and your life in the, in the prevention power of the spirit. That means that the power of God is going to prevent the weapon that's formed up against you from prospering. Because your seed is going to prosper above it. What did Zechariah chapter 8 verse 12 say? The seed shall prosper. So no weapon formed against me shall prosper because I have a seed that's prospering against the weapon. The weapon that's being formed against me has to realize that I don't use my weapon 
to form against it. Oh, my goodness, man. The weapon that's formed against me, it gets quickened and say, oh, snap. They done formed a weapon against me already. And their weapon is prospering against me. So that weapon can't prosper against you. I have met so many people in my ministry that when they sow seed into me, the, the, the private and personal matters of their life start to be solved by the favor of God and the justice of God. Because when you sowed the seed, while you didn't see everything that was going to come your way in the future, that seed is a weapon that you're forming against the gates of hell. So when the gates of hell try to form a weapon against you, it can't prosper because your weapon already on the scene prospering. Oh, my goodness. So, so watch this here. That's why when, when I've received thousands of dollars before, I don't take the thousands of dollars and go make a life with it. I don't take the thousands of dollars and start doing different stuff with it because that seed. I sow the seed because... What I'm really supposed to have and spend is hidden in me passing the seed test. It's not in me taking the financial miracle and utilizing it for my own selfish motive and own selfish schedule. It's for me to sow at a greater level so that I could show the father of my readiness to receive his riches, his riches in my health, his riches in my body, his riches in my mind, his riches in my money, his riches in my relationship. Oftentimes people put their trust in financial increase. When that financial increase is attached with examination and investigation, God will investigate you. You say that God is your source. You say that you, you, you are in the kingdom of heaven system. Well, God will put money in your hand that you didn't even know was coming and see what you're going to do with it. The Holy Spirit is the one that graduates you to higher sowing. Because what I'm revealing to you in this teaching, the amount of sowing must go higher to deal with with the higher levels of opposition and adversity and persecution and deception and darkness that you're going to come up against. Some of you all are here right now. You wonder why the Spirit of God been having you sow thousand dollar seeds for the last three years. But look at what you have faced in the area of warfare. Look at who attacked you that you didn't expect to attack you. Look at what shocked you and rattled you. You didn't see this person turning and walking with the devil, but now they're walking with the devil. Look at the level of darkness you have experienced the last three years. I'm showing you something, and I'm not just talking about last three years. I'm just giving an example for you to picture this. When God start pulling more seed out of you, if you fast forward in time and let time happen, you start recognizing, oh, everybody at the job getting fired. I still got my job. This person, it could be your child's father. It could be your child's mother. It could be, it could be your, anybody. It could be a business partner. Anybody. You start seeing people acting fishy and you see the power of God step in and do supernatural deliverances on your behalf for you to go free. Saints. Seed sowing is so powerful that it'll even deal with the police stop. The police will stop you. You don't even got your license on. You don't even got your insurance. And the police will give you a warning and let you go. That's the seed prospering for a time that you couldn't see. You know how many times stray bullets, it don't touch you because your seed done prospered against that weapon of stray bullets. 
You know how many times the seed prevents you from rape? Now, if you got a sexy body as a woman, it's like a different bracket. If you look nice as a man, like people want to rob you and stuff. If you look nice as a woman, uh, oftentimes somebody might want to rape you. You know how many times somebody is thinking evil against you, but they can't perform it. Because the angels that you done, you done enforced Marcelli, Nicaprio. You, you enforce these angels around you. These angels like, no, no, not her. You cross here, you deal with us. The honorable woman is guarded from what the common woman suffers. The, did you catch that? The sewing man is shielded from the fiery darts that the sinful man falls prey to, the sewing man. See, I made up in my mind I was going to be a sewing man. I'll never put my trust in money. I'll never put my trust in houses. I'll never put my trust in clothes. I'll never put my trust in food. I'll never put my trust in flesh and blood. I put my trust in the power of the Spirit of God. And this is what I operate by. And before I sow seed, I'm meditating on the power of the Spirit. That's where my seed comes out of. And if my revelation of the power of the Spirit is small, so will my seed be. If my revelation of the power of the Spirit is big, so will my seed be. See, the woman with the two mites, you might look and say, well, she only had a small amount to sow. So she wasn't spending her time correctly. Wrong. Because the Bible says she was a poor widow. Which means that she had a husband that died. <laughs> and her husband, who was her caretaker, ex exited out of the earth. And this woman recognized, I need Jesus. The, the husband I had don't exist. The provider that I could see don't exist. I need supernatural provision. I need supernatural money to move in my life. I need to receive a strategy of how to obtain provision now. My life has changed from how it was. I used to have a caretaker. I used to have someone that would bring bread and bring food, but now that person is dead. I need a strategy and an impartation of the wealth power of God to get me through on the earth. And that woman started sowing seed. She didn't make no excuses. See, she didn't say, hey, 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 my, 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 my husband died. So now I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm alienated from sowing. She was in need and used the seed. There's people that don't be in need and still won't use the seed. She was at a disadvantage and used her advantage. That's why it caught Jesus' attention. Jesus know when you have money and you could handle everything that you want to handle and you start sowing and you start a regiment of sowing, um, the regiment becomes a rhythm. Sowing must become a rhythm. Before you could receive the inheritance in fullness. If you ever watch somebody who don't walk in the hundredfold, they don't ever develop a rhythm of sowing. The sometime is sower, you pop up every now and again. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> this done took me out, man. This done took me out. You know what the Holy Ghost said? I, I know. I know. I know you're not ready for it. I know you're not ready for it. The Holy Ghost just said, the booty call sore. <laughs> the, the booty call sore. <laughs> <laughs> the booty called sower, the one night stand sower. 
Huh? You, you're not looking for no commitment. <laughs> you just want to be intimate with the presence of God every now and again. You just want to be intimate with the power of the Lord every now and again. You don't want to be married to the sowing anointing. You don't want to honor him full time as a lifestyle. You, you're just a booty call sower. See, oh my goodness, I, I want you to stay with me. And see, uh, the booty call sower, <laughs> you, the, booty, <laughs> the booty call sower, you only get uh, riled up because every, <laughs> every now and again, you get horny to sow. Okay, but, but your, your, your sowing drive is low. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Your sowing drive is low. But every now and again, you get horny to sow. You get stimulated. You hear the word and you're like, oh, oh, and, 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 and you get stimulated to sow. But you're not, there's no commitment there. Because if there's no stimulation, you're not going to keep on sowing. If you don't feel horny to sow, you're not going to keep on sowing. So even uh, you, you have to have a pure heart to be uh, powerful in seed sowing because you're not always going to be going off our atmosphere to sow the seed. To sow the seed, you're going to have to all of a sudden quicken yourself and remind yourself because the sowing anointing will go. It will leave you. If you're taking notes, write this down. The sowing anointing will lift off of any person that is not aggressive and fighting to keep sowing. See, to this day, I'm fighting to keep on sowing. You ain't hear what I said. That means I'm going through my day. It looks like I'm busy. I say, uh-uh, no, no, I'm going to pit a cedar. I'm going to pit over a $1,000 cedar. I'm going to pit it up. You are the one that have to take sowing by its horns. Grip it. And don't let the enemy rip it. There are people that had little sowing tears in their garment. It got torn a little bit by the enemy. But then the enemy completely rips it. Then the enemy completely steals it. Because that person doesn't guard their heart with all diligence. And, and that diligent heart also had diligent hands. And what did the Bible say in the book of Proverbs? That the diligent hands shall bear rule. You got to guard your heart with diligence because inside of your heart is diligent sowing hands. If you're not intentional about the seed, that so an anointing will lift off of you. There'll come a time in your life where you're not even honoring King Jesus no more. You don't even care about King Jesus no more because you didn't value the mystery of the kingdom that was revealed to you. Now, seed sowing and the fear of God are in great oneness with each other. So when person not sowing seed, they also not fearing God. Because imagine, fear means to reverence, to respect, to hold in high regard, to not cross them. Imagine you start robbing God. What do you what will we say about your mentality? You're not afraid that the God that you're robbing might not wake you up tomorrow? <laughs> you, are you seeing this? You're not afraid that the God that you're robbing might not give you another day in his earth. But see, I'm showing you this is the insanity that the heart goes when it starts to rob God and is not moving in that so anointed. Your disrespect him thinking that he got to wake you up tomorrow. And he might not do it. Even though I'm doing the conference... <laughs> In June, you might not make it to June. You're not here. You're not hearing me, baby. I said not because I said that I'm doing a conference. You still might not make it.
Remember, I, I was telling you that one big mistake that people make, they, they think that they're going to live because they just had a child. You know, God going to let me live because I got to raise this child. No, you don't. God got many people that he can use to raise that child. See, there's things that people don't think about. People will say, no, 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 he got to wake me up because I, I just got pregnant. He got to wake me up because my child is two years old. He got to wake me up because I got a five-year-old. I got a 10-year-old. I got to raise them. No, you, if, if your time is judged that you go, you'll go while they 10, while they 11, while they 12, while they two years old, while they three years old, you'll, you'll check out. God got somebody set up that can raise that child. Saints, it's nothing more humbling when you actually realize that if I choose not to be on the Lord's side, he got other options. He got people that he can raise up in my place. He got people that he could raise up and give them the same information he gave me. Did, did you hear what I said? I said there's people that he can raise up and give them the same information that he gave me. He gave me this information. I understand this. Well, the same way he opened up my understanding, he'll open up their understanding too. Sometimes you think that you go so far in God that nobody can reach you. I'm so peculiar, I, nobody can reach me. It's okay for you to have that confidence, mind you. But what I'm saying is, if you start to casualize it and play around with it, remember, the same God that raised you up by his spirit can raise up another. When you sow in seed, you're keeping your fire burning. Honoring God financially is keeping your marriage with him spicy and strong and fiery. You don't want a dry marriage with the Lord. You don't want intimacy to die. Because the seed is the sex life between you and God. This is where you are creating harvests. You're being impregnated with wealth, impregnated with money cometh, impregnated with wisdom. Solomon, the reason why he unlocked such a big sex life, because his seed was the big sex life that he first engaged with God. When I say the sex life, many people don't even understand what sex is. Sex was created as a seed transfer, transferring um, event, a seed transferring event that what, sancti what, what uh, sanctifies it and makes it so unique is the pleasure that comes with it. Or the pleasure that arrives with it. Um, don't think about it. Uh, so he made the word sex because he was saying seed is going to be transferred. The seed is going to create something. And it is going to be overshadowed with pleasure. So when we get to the sowing that you do on your altar, when I tell you it is the sex life between you and God, your seed is creating something and is impregnating you. It's impregnating your atmosphere with miracle. And then this is a pleasurable experience for God. He is able to experience you planting the seed into him.
God is the one that multiplies the seed when it is sown into him. Because in his word is a multiplying factory that's supernatural. It causes things in your life to be beautified and glorified. It takes every moment of your life and causes it to submit itself to heaven's economy and heaven's conditions. And when God created everything in perfection and everything covered in harvests, he called it a place called heaven. So understand that heaven is really translated harvests. It's a place of harvests. My goodness, my goodness, I'm telling you something in here. So understand that when God said, look at this place where all type of harvests are, he said, let me call it heaven. And then he put you on earth. He put you on earth so that you could. What's the first E A R T H? E A R. The first three letters of earth is spelled ear. So when God put you on the earth, the ear, it was for you to hear about all of his weapons that he used in heaven, and it was the seed. So now, look, he said, as long as the earth remains, as long as the ear remains, there'll be seed time and harvest. There'll be heaven's weapon operating on the earth for you to receive the same conditions in heaven as it is on earth. The disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray. He said, pray that my kingdom come my will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Which means when you pray that prayer, you're saying, Lord, let your, let your harvest ability be unlocked for me. Let your harvest condition, let the world of your harvests now let it sit on me and saturate me. Just think about it. When you pray for the will of God, you're praying for the harvests of God. 